What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. As you guys can see, we have the live stream up right now. In 20 minutes, we are going to be reacting to the entire live stream besides the stuff that I do not really care about. Majority of stuff is going to be PoE 1. Don't really care much about PoE 2. Hope that tornado shot doesn't get nerfed. If it does, I'll just play a new skill. Other than that, let's go ahead and get into the reaction. Hopefully, this is a good one. Let's see. Three, two, one. Let's go. Hi, I'm Chris oh, Wilson. Jump gear. <laughs> From Grinding Gear yeah. Games. Welcome to our live stream. We have a busy lineup today with announcements for Path of Exile 2, as well as the exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Necropolis, which launches on March 29th. For the first time ever, we'll be releasing this expansion simultaneously on all platforms, PC, Mac, and console. Twitch drops are enabled on today's livestream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your suffering back attachment. Today's stream will start with Path of Exile 2, where Jonathan oh, will show you our latest announcements. Mark will then take you on a deep dive into the new Path of Exile Necropolis Challenge League, which launches in one week. He'll cover the league mechanics, its deep crafting system, large endgame changes, some improvements to the core Path of Exile campaign, and finally some quality of life features. Okay. We'll then show you our campaign new supporter packs, and we'll head into a live Q&A session where that CPD what I think will ask special questions from Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. Hey guys, it's time to chat about PoE2 again. Oh no. Boring! So let's just get straight into it with the trailer for Path of Exile Necropolis. Yeah, here we go! Here we go! I'm... Cold flesh, oh, dirt, maggots, and ghosts. Our job is to keep them where they belong. It's your first night, so you'll need this. A ghostly lantern for ghastly tinkering. You'll learn to peer into the whoa, souls. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Yes, and finally they're adding it. Gear of overhaul. New pin of ultimate bosses. Oh. Oh, it's shoot. The job. Oh, 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 oh shoot. <laughs> what do you say? Okay. In the Necropolis League, you will encounter Undertaker Aramor, a man collecting the scattered spirits of the Eternal Empire for a mysterious purpose. These spirits have begun to haunt the monsters of Rayclast, unleashing their ancient fury and sorrow onto the world. The Undertaker will provide you with the Lantern of Aramor, a powerful family heirloom which can illuminate the wrathful spirits haunting monsters throughout Rayclast. With it, the Undertaker hopes to employ you to rid Rayclast of this menace and further his cryptic cause. The Lantern can be used when entering any new area. When peering through it, you can examine the spirits haunting that area. The Lantern also allows you to manipulate them, letting you configure which monsters are affected by which mobs. It would be wise to take your time with your decisions here, for the spirits are not forgiven. When peering through the lantern, you can also see extra details about the packs of monsters in the area. 
Rowers here are considered common, whereas the water elementals are more scarce. If you want things to be easier, you can put the more difficult spirits on the elementals, which you'll encounter less often. Okay. We've tried to make sure that by engaging with the lantern, you are able to intelligently control the difficulty in the Necropolis League. The spirits come in a number of forms which represent the danger they pose. For example here, the infested vultures are servant haunted, causing them to deal a small amount of increased damage. But the vole's vanguard are noble haunted, causing them to deal a large amount of increased damage. As you reach higher level areas in Rayclast, the tear and number of spirits that are haunting monsters will generally increase. Your game knowledge can help you here. If you're aware of the composition of a monster pack, this means certain mods will be easier to manage. For example, the mod that increases a pack's damage for every monster killed has no effect on packs with a single monster, like a devourer. However, if we found a spirit that makes the strongest monster in a pack deal 100% more damage, well, I'm going to avoid the devourer. You might have noticed that the Lantern of Aramore provides other useful information, such as the types of abilities monsters use, or the damage types they deal. So for those who are less familiar with how these monsters work, this can be a great way to learn what you're up against. The spirits are constantly moving throughout Rayclast, so if you are finding a campaign area too difficult, you can just wait a few minutes and peer through the lantern again to see what's changed. Of course, powerful spirits beget powerful rewards. There are two reasons why you might want to face a challenge now and then. Firstly, not all the spirits are malicious. Sometimes the monsters aren't haunted at all, but are instead devoted. These can grant basic rewards like increased experience, or bigger rewards like spawning the Nameless Seer, an NPC that will grant you a single unique item after you defeat all of the packs affected by that he spirit. Him back. The more haunted monsters you defeat mm. in the previous area before using the lantern, the more likely the devoted monsters will appear in the next area. Monsters haunted by higher tier spirits will increase the chance of the devoted appearing even more, meaning that sometimes it's worth putting the hardest modifier possible on very common monsters, if you're brave enough. Again, we've tried hard here to allow players to customize the danger and rewards as much as they can. Aramor is an undertaker, and you can probably guess what we're taking to him. The second main reward from the Necropolis League is monsters with unresolved anguish. Once slain, their corpses need extra care from the Undertaker, and he will offer to take them back to his necropolis and store them in the morgue. Time to earn your keep. When you are ready, you can visit the morgue to view the monsters you have collected, and then get to work burying them in one of many graves in Aramor's cemetery. For example, we will bury this Katava's Herald. Aramor's mysterious soul experiments can coalesce powerful items. Here I've chosen to create a pair of boots. Of Lunaris, heal your pains and aid this soldier so that you may grace them with fleetness. These boots are useful for my character, but aren't exactly what I hoped for. And this is where the Necropolis crafting system really shines. You'll have noticed that the corpse we collected earlier had a crafting effect on it. In fact, all collected corpses do. If you bury multiple corpses in the cemetery, all adjacent corpses can be exercised at once to create one item. All of the crafting effects on those corpses will apply to that same item. This allows you to have either one or many different crafting projects ongoing in the cemetery. For example, next time I try to create boots, I could bury corpses that increase the chance of getting move speed modifiers. To go further, I could use these to generate higher tier modifiers. Then I could try to bias it towards being an evasion pair with this. Finally, I'll apply some crafting effects that improve the probability of getting good rolls. Now, let's craft our item and see what we get. As you can see now, we have a much better pair of boots, forged from the souls of our enemies. You could even use the entire cemetery to craft one item. There is always something you can do to try and ensure your item will be as best as it can be. 
We hope to see some really crazy Gravecrafts. If you are lucky, you might find corpses with meta-crafting modifiers. These can be buried to manipulate your crafting projects in more drastic ways. This one increases the potency of all crafting effects of adjacent undead corpses. Another meta-crafting modifier gives a chance to drop an extra item from your craft, with all the same crafting outcomes applied. All you have to do is bury a lot of undead monsters. You can also craft new unique items exclusive to the Necropolis League using this system. As you explore Rayclast, you might find the corpses of famous Eternal Empire families. And when you bury an entire family together and exorcise them, they will thank you with a unique specific to their lineage. For example, the Navalius Inheritance Belt. I'll give you a moment to check that out. You can use other corpses alongside oh, them to grant implicit yeah. mods, manipulate yeah. the values of explicit mods, and more. In this case, with the Parandus Pact, you can even change the modifiers it generates. This unique is a jewel which adds extra stats to passive skills in a radius when socketed into the passive skill tree. The stats it adds are randomly generated, but you can bias it towards a specific type by using other crafting effects, such as this one which increases the chance of getting life modifiers. Let's see what we get. Damn, we didn't get it this time. I guess we're gonna have to go and collect more corpses. Of course, you can trade the corpses away to other players. All you need to do is purchase empty coffins from the Undertaker and use them on your corpses in the morgue, which will itemize them. Oh, okay, so you can trade them. That's nice. Another item in the Necropolis League that you can find are Embers of the All Flame. These are monster spirits that remain living in the All Flame, a powerful ancient artifact of Rayclast. And you can set them free by placing them in the Lantern of Aramor and defeating them. These Embers drop throughout Rayclast as itemized packs of monsters. You are able to use these packs to replace the packs in areas. For example, we have found this all flame ember of Tarfog. Oh, we can now go to enter the next area and replace oh. one of the monster packs in here. You can see we have also he gotten one tattoos. of the devoted modifiers to appear. That's nice. We can pair up the Karui ancestors with this modifier, making them even more rewarding. Let's go ahead and replace the tentacle miscreations. However, when replacing packs, you want to nice. double check their density as the new pack will inherit the density of the replaced pack. The Karui ancestors we have now added to our area can even drop basic variations of tattoos. If you aren't aware, this is an item type from the That's Trial of nice. the Ancestors League, which tattoos can be used back. in passive skills to change what they do. There are many different types of itemized packs. You can find Breach and Legion monsters that drop splinters, untainted packs that provide insane amounts of experience, and even simple frogs, which can be used to replace difficult monsters to make life easier. And of course, these ember monsters can be raised as specters too. Finally, let's discuss how this league wow. works in in-game maps. Each in-game map will allow you to manipulate it using the lantern on the map device UI. However, instead of randomly cycling every few minutes, it is fixed to that map. Once you view the map through the lantern, you cannot remove it from the map device, so you can't trade that map away now that you've seen it is too difficult for you, or has monsters in it that you'd rather avoid, like porcupines. We're also trying something new this time around. During the Necropolis League, there will be support for the League on the Atlas Passive Tree. Multiple clusters will be there, allowing you to enhance the gameplay, customize it, and even change its oh, behavior in meaningful they're ways. Oh, they're putting it on the Atlas now. One way that you can change the crafting in a meaningful way is with the Prospero's Wager Keystone. That's huge! With this Keystone, all the monsters with unresolved anguish come with this crafting modifier, That's which causes huge. them to generate a random craft when buried. This means instead of pre-planning your crafts, you have to adapt to them on the fly to get the best results. These clusters will not be available in Standard League.
In 324 we've made a plethora of changes to the endgame, we've introducing new bosses, adding another tier of maps, and streamlining the atlas. The most difficult and most rewarding content in Path of Exile can be found in uber pinnacle bosses, such as the Maven and the Searing Exarch. Currently the only way to access these bosses is by allocating specific keystones on the atlas passive tree. While this system offers a nice element of control, it causes a problem. Rewards and access to the non-Uber variants are now economically priced around the rewards of the Uber fights. This means it is wasteful to run the non-Uber variants instead of simply selling them. Another problem that we noticed is the difficulty jump between the Pinnacle and Uber Pinnacle content was relatively large, and there wasn't obvious content that could bridge this gap. Many players would give up on their characters before being able to defeat the Uber Pinnacle bosses. In 324 we will be making some changes to this. We are removing the keystones that give access to the uber pinnacle bosses from the atlas tree, oh, oh, oh. and instead we'll be adding a new set of fragments that give you access to this content. Oh, okay! Where do you get these fragments? We are adding a new tier of maps, tier 17 maps, tier 17 which not map. only give you access to the uber pinnacle content, but also test your characters in new ways. They feature a new set of bosses, uber monsters, and a new tier of modifiers that can roll on the maps. There are five new tier 17 maps in total, with some surprising boss fights at the end. We'll look at a couple today, and the rest you'll have to discover for yourself. First, we have the Citadel map. This map contains an ancient Kalgurin Citadel. You will encounter many expedition monsters as the signature packs throughout the map. At the end, you will fight Uber Uhtred. Uber this is Uhtred. a version of a boss from Expedition League. <laughs> with oh all its abilities God. and mechanics enhanced. <laughs> Uber Uhtred will even be able to summon two other expedition bosses to aid it during the fight. Uber Expedition! <laughs> Secondly, we have the Fortress map. This <laughs> map is an impregnable fortress, guarded by monsters from the Heist League. At the end, Uber you will encounter Heist an Uber character. version of The Unbreakable. Again, it has enhanced That's abilities funny. and mechanics you have to learn and overcome. Each of the tier 17 map bosses has a chance to drop a unique item, allowing for some target farming. However, these aren't entirely new unique items. Instead, we've taken other unique items, removing them from the core drop pool, and rebalancing them to fit here. One example is this reworked version of Wraith Lord. It has four abyss sockets, and allows you to summon an additional spectre for each ghastly eye jewel socketed Ow. into it. Okay. Another example is Mana Storm. This has been rebalanced to grant a lot more damage than before, alongside some more impactful mana stats. If you can get lucky rolls. Mm. Alongside adding okay. tier 17 right. maps, we have also changed the uber pinnacle bosses to have completely distinct unique item drop pools from their non-uber counterparts. This means there is a reason to farm both versions. Let's take a look at the shaper versus the uber shaper. The Shaper will drop these uniques. Voidwalker, Shaper's Touch, Solstice Vigil, and Dying Sun. Whereas the Uber Shaper will drop these. Echoes of Creation, Sublime Vision, Entropic Devastation, Starforge, oh, wow. and a new unique belt called the Tides of Time. Another example oh, of a new unique is this shoot. helmet from the Uber okay. Eater of Worlds, Ravenous Passion. And these gloves from the Uber Searing Exarch, the Celestial Brace. Each of the Uber Pinnacle bosses has a new unique added to their drop pools. We have identified another major problem with the endgame we'd like to address. With every expansion added to the game, we have been increasing the complexity of running maps. It's at the point now where a player must repeatedly execute a large sequence of steps to run maps efficiently. It can be easy to forget critical steps, and it can be tiring to repeat them. To solve this, we are removing some systems, but are keeping what is good about them. The two main systems we've removed are Sextants and the Master Mission Selector. It is not our sextants? intention to dull the content, however. We have completely reworked Scarabs to include most of the options that were previously covered by those mechanics, and many, many more. Let's take a look at some of them. Commonly, you might find Scarabs that simply grant access to different content. Here, we have a Scarab that causes Beyond Demons to spawn when killing monsters in your maps. And here, we have one that adds a Delirium Mirror. Scarab. Each type of Scarab now has multiple versions, 
so if you want to fully invest in a type of content, you can do so. Here's a suite of ultimatum scarabs. This ultimatum scarab adds an ultimatum encounter to a map. This ultimatum scarab of bribing then causes that ultimatum encounter to grant better rewards and its monsters to yield more experience. This ultimatum scarab of dueling will cause that ultimatum encounter to always guarantee the trial master boss fight at the end, assuming you can survive through all the rounds. <laughs> this ultimatum scarab of catalyzing will cause all rewards from that ultimatum to be catalysts <laughs> oh instead God. of other rewards. And finally, this ultimatum scarab of inscription will cause all catalyst rewards from that ultimatum to be inscribed ultimatums instead. There are plenty of others. If you enjoy divination card farming, you might want to use these. This divination scarab of curation causes more divination cards to drop for each different favoured map you have selected. But it also causes whatever map you're running to only drop divination cards from those favoured maps. Oh so if you want to goodness. try and aim for your mage blood and don't want to just farm Crimson Temple, then this scarab is for you. Oh my god! This divination that's scarab of completion causes your divination cards to have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack, stack instead for maximum cards. dopamine. Basically, there are now just a lot of scarabs. You might have also noticed oh. that they no longer have tears. Scarabs are now all world drops. You can get them anywhere. We get Some scarabs, might be all rarer scarabs than others, everywhere. But the intention is that there'll be a lot more options than before, and more interesting combinations to consider. If you want to target specific scarabs, Betrayal has been updated to include most of them, and you will need to relearn which ones come from where. While this system is allowing you to heavily invest in one type of content, it is reducing your capacity for variety. To address this, we have massively increased access to content on the Atlas Passive Tree. You are now able to reliably get different leagues like Breach or Legion from just your Atlas passives. Regarding Master Missions, content such as Incursion, Delve, oh. Betrayal and Bestiary, these two are now accessible with Scarabs and have more reliable investment options on the tree. Not only this, you can now get Jun, Einhar, Alva and Nico to appear together in the same map. We have also removed some keystones such as Wandering Path, Grand Design, oh, and Growing Horse, but have added some new ones too. <laughs> For example, Unwavering Vision, Back to Basics, and Thorough Exploration. Oh, it's our power by and we have added some new notables such as Remarkable Relics. <laughs> which allows you to try find better variants of scarabs. Mounting modifiers, which increases the values of modifiers on your maps by 2% for each explicit modifier. And tainted carapaces, which is just one in a set of many that allow you to target farm specific types of scarabs. These are just a few of the many new notables that can be found on the Atlas Passive skill tree. Lastly, we are giving you more flexibility in what content you want to run in the endgame. In 324, you can now have multiple copies of the Atlas tree, which can be swapped between maps yes. at your leisure. Now we can have you can the unlock Atlas. Up to two oh, extra that's trees so nice. for a total of three. We by progressing three trees through the end game that we can pick from. and completing core content. Yes, yes, that's nice. When you nice. open a map, you can select which tree you would like to use. For a given league, you'll never feel constrained Wait, to playing your end game oh, a single so way. Amazing. You can also label your trees to easily identify which one has which content. With all this combined, we're hoping to see new endgame strategies shine through. While playing through the campaign in 324, you'll notice a myriad of small improvements and surprises. The fundamentals of the campaign are still intact, but we've scattered fun encounters and secrets throughout okay. Raycast. They're putting The Dweller That's of the nice. Deep has That's been nice. trapped. What are these ritual shrines doing in the Northern Forest? They're and why are they the giving me omens? Near. That's nice. This device looks safe. I should definitely use this on my items. They put Alva in, in, in the campaign. There are plenty <laughs> more encounters to discover. We'll continue adding more surprises in future oh, releases. Oh, that's too funny. So keep an eye out. In the previous expansion, 323, we released a large number of transfigured skill gems. These are alternate versions of existing skill gems that function in very different ways, allowing for more build and gameplay variety. At the time, our aspirations were higher than we could achieve. 
we planned more gems than we could make. So, in 324, we're adding another set of transfigured gems that we have now finished. I shot, incinerate, artillery ballista, tornado, elemental hit, kinetic blast, poisonous concoction, and lastly, summon holy relic. Summon holy relic. Hopefully that's those a, of you who missed your favorite skill right having a transfigured variant will get that here. We will certainly be adding more of these in the future, especially for skills that are missing them still. Of course, we'll also be doing a balance pass on the existing transfigured gems. One of the main ones we're looking at is Henetic Bolt of Fragmentation. As a result of this change, it is clear that the endgame potential of the Wanda archetype rarely starts to suffer, mostly in the single target damage department. Due to this, we've added the new support gem, Sacred Wisps. This support gem causes supported skills to create two attached wisps for a duration. With these wisps, whenever you attack, they have a chance to also use the same skill, if you have enemies in your oh, presence. Oh, wow! And if there are any rare or unique enemies, they will always use the skill. That leads us into all the other quality of life features we're introducing in 324. And there's a shitload of them. Many of these have been revealed in teasers already, but here's a quick summary. We've added the automation and call to arms skill gems for being able to trigger instant skills and war cries without having to bind them to left click. You can now hold down control and left click to automatically apply certain currency orbs until they achieve the desired result, or you run out. For example, you can hold down fusings until you reach maximum links. You will be able to control, shift, click currency into a trade window to automatically move all of that currency at once from your inventory. Detonate Dead now has clearer telegraphing effects. When harvest crafting, the item hover will always be visible, so you no longer have to mouse back and forth to see the results of your crafts. Oh, this is nice. When you use a Val Orb on a map, the map no longer has a chance to become unidentified. Instead, it adds a new implicit. We've created a set of implicits that affect the areas in fun ways. Related to that, corrupted and mirrored items can now be identified. Breach hands now open upon approach Wait, and no and longer need to be clicked. Identified now? Upgrades to Pantheon powers now apply to all characters in a league. You no longer need to grind divine vessels on each new character. That's With cool. harvest crafting, you can now re-roll uber elder fragments. Fragments dropped by the Shaper cannot be re-rolled into fragments dropped by the Elder, and vice versa. Regarding Betrayal, we're removing Ashling's crafting bench as a reward. Instead, Veiled Orbs now perform that function. They remove a mod and replace it with a Veiled mod. These orbs now drop from Katarina and are no longer a world drop. Flasks can now be corrupted by Val Orbs, giving random minus 10 to plus 10 quality. The capability to add extra quality to weapons, armors and flasks has been removed from betrayal the betrayal oh, wow. bench craft that converts an amulet to a talisman has been oh, moved wow. to bestiary and thus can be traded maven invitations no longer drop instead when you have completed witnessing all bosses required to go to the maven's arena you can just talk to karak and he'll open a map device window with the invitation already in there ready to be rolled baldo's maps that granted invitations now give scarabs no more having to waste guardian kills to try get invitations to drop. All right, so we got into the patch notes. Let's take a look at absolutely everything. The stuff that I'm going to be talking about is mainly the stuff that's going to be affecting the Zero to Hero. The rest of this stuff I'm not going to have in into the video. Majority of it, once again, will only be towards the Zero to Hero. Oh, I'm scared to see Tornado Shot. Oh, I'm so scared. Here we go. Tornado Shot. Tornado Shot now has an attack speed multiplier of 80% of base, previously 100%, and now uses the same bow animations as the Puncture Skill Gem. It now has a mana cost of 10 at the gem level 1, previously 8, scaling up to 12 at gem level 20. Quality now provides 0.40% increases. Projectile speed is. Oh, they killed it. Oh, they killed it. They killed Tornado Shot. They killed it. It's over. We'll be looking at new a new build. They've killed tornado shot. They nerfed it, the attack speed. They, they you know they nerfed the gym. You know it costs more on the gym. And on top of that, it you know the this is the big one. 
they changed the quality from plus one projectiles to now increased projectile speed. That is a hard nerf to a tornado shot. Uh, did they turn light? Did they turn lightning arrow? Let me check right here. Lightning arrow of electrocution arrows now damage final target four additional times after sticking in previously three. We can play lightning arrow. They touch tornado shot, but they didn't touch lightning arrow, which means we are still in there. We're still good. I think that's it. Really, there's really not much else. We got we got nerfed pretty hard. Tornado shot is not worth doing anymore. We'll, we'll most likely go lightning arrow because I think uh, lightning arrow is still good. They didn't change it at all or nothing like that. Next Tuesday we'll be dropping the best league starters to go so stay tuned for that none of this stops anything we're still going to be really grinding the game the league mechanic actually looks solid hope you guys enjoyed this video hit that like hit that subscribe button subscribe 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 catch you guys in the next video